I know, Jules, I don't know if it's in your work, work title, but I'd never heard of it really before until uh, until the Southern Initiative, the entrepreneur, um, the title of entrepreneur. And I was like, what in God's name is an entrepreneur? Never heard of that before. But I like the idea of it. The idea, now that I know what it is, it's an entrepreneur within a government agency or within a structure. And actually, um, I had a friend in Ireland and they had a course on it in Ireland. And I was really, I remember we were chatting about it because when I was working in government, trying different um, projects and she said, oh, no, there's this course of trying to get government um, bureaucrats to be more entrepreneurial. And I was like, oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? If we could, if we could be more entrepreneurial within government, whether we, because that's the thing, you want to be able to risk take a little bit, and you want to be able to be a bit more outspoken, though, and, you know, and, and less bureaucratic um, and diplomatic, which you know you often have to be when you work within local or central government. Um, but I liked the idea, and maybe Jules, can I ask you about how you feel about the word entrepreneur? Because I think that's ish in your title on the TWI. Is that are you allowed? Do you feel that? Do you feel that you're allowed to be a little bit more of a risk taker and you can be less diplomatic? So my I am not an entrepreneur. That's not my job title. Okay. Um, but my colleagues are entrepreneurs, okay. and and um, what we quite often say in our team is that we we hold the risk for a lot of like small organisations if we're going to to test something, which is you know you test do and then scale. Um, we can hold that risk for these other organisations, and as um, Actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking in the room now. To do a bit of a, how much can I say without getting fired? Um, <laughs> um, so being um, being within a government agency, but being able to be more agile um, because we have leadership in our team who hold that for us. Was that good, Prith? <laughs> Nicely said, I thought. I, I, I think that's the, I mean, I, I hope Denise will beat me up. I think that's our role, Jules, eh? as though, those of us that are in the machine. How do we How do we go, it's okay, rest of the machine. We can hold this, we'll make it safe. You know, we, we're built to do this, actually. And okay, people outside the machine come, we can connect here, we can connect here. And that just creates some synapses between the machine and not the machine. I think, I think that's beautifully said, Jules. And I totally agree. We need you. We need you, entrepreneurial types, if that's the word, but people to hold the risk and to bridge the gap, if you like, and to um, allow us to be creative. But that whole in and of service thing to the community, which is what councils are there for, and how we interface with that, too. It's about working to our strengths, and I'm being careful, too. Although I'd have to fire myself, but. Um, I might, um, but yeah, I know we need entrepreneurs. We need people to hold risks in council and that also comes back. It's a community approach in itself too. And I know I'm a bit big on this, but this is for Nonatanga. This is having trust between us as individuals, as organisations, as departments, internally in council as well, because there's plenty of times when that pulls apart at different for a whole bunch of different reasons and then comes back together again. So that, yeah, for Nonatanga, that trust and relationship moving at the speed of trust that's the bottom line, really. We spend a lot of time internally looking for um, kind of like, like, like within the organisation, those people who are willing to just push the boat out a little bit and you're like, yes, let's, let's, try, and, let's try and shift something internally just a tiny bit. Let's see if we can make this happen just a tiny bit. And, you know, as we've said, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't fly and sometimes it does. And you're like, oh, yes might have just got something here yeah i think it's quite a powerful piece when you can get an external person who is a risk taker and an internal risk taker who are willing to back each other up and then when it does work fight fight to make it bigger and better um and that's where i sometimes think that you know when you're when you're front and i could and i could get fired myself in my own role for say this the next step is that if you're funded to do work but you're funded in isolation where they're not really interested in the outcome they just like the idea to begin with it's much better to be partnered in that funding so that you can actually work in partnership to deliver something and then scale it or you know even take those failures and learn from them rather than have them as isolated you know it, it, it's the togetherness i think between external and you know government that can make the difference those those partnerships 
Yeah, it, is, it, is it all right to add there's, there's I don't know many people inside the Auckland Council machine who aren't trying to do their best for the city in their own way. So there's something about how we offer everybody into this conversation and we've, you know, other, other projects that have gone badly is when I've walked into a room and go, you need to listen to my special placemaking, you stupid person doesn't get what I do. And, and that poor person isn't, isn't welcomed in, isn't, isn't empowered, isn't whatever. So there's a, there's a recognizing that everybody in the city is a community member of this, of this place and how those that might be feeling quite, you know, often in council, the people who are making your life harder, it's because they're afraid of losing their job. It's because they're afraid of ending up on the front page of the Herald. It's all the, all the stuff we're given as council employees that makes us play by the rules, which is good because we are paid by the ratepayer. That sometimes means we become intractable. So there's a kind of a, to use a regenerative term, harmonizing job here of we're all on this journey of trying to make the city as good as possible. So, so what are all of our different roles? And, and to be a bit brave, there was a phrase said in Vancouver a little while ago, which is the community is the expert and the community isn't the expert. We have lost our respect for experts in some of these conversations. And we need awesome designers and amazing engineers. And oh, that's a good, that's a really good question sitting there from Paul Dixon. Um, uh, but, but we need we need people who know how to do stuff alongside the people who know how to live in a place. And we need everybody working together collectively, focus on place, you do everything differently territory. I think that's a really important thing for us to remember. It's easy for us to shut someone else out and say they're not of they're not of the group I'm in and therefore I don't, you know, respect or, or listen to them. And, and you know, we've got our own versions inside council of who we shut out within the own we're our own whānau. We're trying to break that down with the word placemaking. We're all here to serve the city. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Can I just add something there? I think also the mixed changes of the expert, non-expert, or the expert in living and indigeneity and the things we bring. And of course, we're intersectional. We're not just one thing. We are all living in the city for a start, you know, in this place. But when we're wanting to do things that require expertise, we want experts to be able to thrive and be at their best. So we need to create conditions for that. At, not at the expense of those that are living in a place, but alongside. So sometimes there's a different weighting. There is no formula in this thing, which is part of the trickiness. Um, I think also that we, just to echo what you're saying, Frith, and actually you two, Jules, is that we all have something to offer and um, something to learn and to welcome people as equals, because if people are bothered to show up, then they've got something to offer. Um, and probably something to learn. And most of the people inside council that I come across as individuals are totally wanting to do those things. Um, it's an interesting question, Paul, that I'll let one of the council people answer. Um, but um, yeah, my experience is that the system, it's when we start to serve the system over the people in the place, which can be really hard when you're in council and the system is so there, um, that's in my experience, where we start to feel that the, the seams coming apart a little bit in that, that space. Mm -hmm.